Well, good day to you. It is January the 24th, and I hope wherever you are, you're having a great start to your day. My name is Gary Willing, and as always, I want to welcome you to Search for Signs if you're new. And if you've been here before, I want to thank you and welcome you back. But whether you've heard this information before or you're totally new, look into it, investigate it for yourself, educate yourself better about it. And then and only then do I think you can find it, see if there's any truth to this for you. So that's why I put links in the description portion of these videos to hopefully make it easier for any one of you to start in your investigation or your education into this information. So look into it for yourself or not. You want to join the discussion? Post comments, post your question in the comments section, email me at searchforsigns.mail.com. You can even reach out to me through Facebook, and I have been putting up more and more posts as of lately to kind of keep the conversation going in between videos. So if you're somebody that loves links and loves to read things in those kind of ways, go to the, the Facebook page and you'll see fresh links from time to time, fresh videos about different things and those kind of things. Uh, and I also want to thank those people who have shared uh, posts on their own Facebook page uh, and those kind of things. So I really appreciate it. Now, uh, Timothy Tilton was the only one to ask a question since the last time I put a video up, but I do want to address... One comment and um, uh, one question, and then I'll get to your question there, Timothy. So the first comment is coming from Ashawak Radati, Ashawak Radati, excuse me. And you've been putting up a lot of posts, and I really do thank you for this because you're you're putting things in there that Benjamin Krem's master wrote, or the master DK, or Benjamin Krem. So if you're somebody who likes to read comments and learn about things that way. Definitely check out some of the posts that uh, this person's been putting up as of lately. Um, but the one question that you said is, what does the term integration mean? We have a tendency to pronounce superficial words thoughtlessly and inaccurately. So I was wondering if you threw that in there because I keep mispronouncing your name. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so you know that, that post that you put in there um, uh, from uh, at the Alice Bailey books, <laughs> it's quite a long post, but that was the one comment that I have about you putting that in there is maybe possibly this is this is their way of saying you're keep mispronouncing my name dummy all right now um peaceful energy you had a question for me actually you're looking for my opinion um i know perhaps you're not looking for my opinion about politics because i could tell it kind of perhaps bothered you a little bit that i was talking about politics in the last two videos i apologize because i know when you talk about politics long enough, sooner or later you're going to hit something that somebody doesn't want you saying. So <laughs> anyway, I perhaps hit that uh, that threshold a couple times in the last few videos. And I did promise to at least try to have nothing but good vibes in this video. So in a way, I'm dedicating this video to you, Peaceful Energy. And, and so hopefully I'll just have nothing but good vibes in this video. But you asked about the World Economic Forum, the WEF. What is my opinion of it? Well... It's not very deep <laughs> opinion because I'm not there. I don't know what they discuss there. So I'm only on the, an outside observer, you know, looking in just like any one of us are because I don't have a billion dollars to get in, you know. But from what I understand it, the World Economic Forum, just like the World Bank, just like the, you know, the was it the G10, G11? I don't even know how many G, Gs there are now, right? Summits that they have, you know, from time to time. You know, they're just, I think, representatives or the actual, you know, representatives of the countries that they're representing or, you know, the corporate interest or billionaires or whatever about how to keep themselves on top, really. And then when it comes to perhaps discussing and talking about uh, poverty, well, that's probably not even the second or third or fourth or fifth item to talk about. It's probably way down the agenda list, you know. Maybe they have little break-off groups and it's in this little tiny little room with about 20 chairs and that's about it and not even those 20 chairs are filled up i don't know this is just my visual of it you know and all the other people that that are the big players are eating dinner at that time or resting in their bed you know their hotel room or out there doing something else i don't know you know because they're probably not talking about it as a hot you know the main topic of the discussion is world poverty right you know and and really it's because those people just like most people don't realize that their own future depends on whether we get this thing worked out. 
because according to Maitreya, without sharing, there will be no justice. Without justice, there will be no peace. And without peace, there will be no future. So until we see it as our, our problem, our own problem, see was, until we see it as our future depends on whether we do this or not, they're not going to do anything with it. Just as the average person is not going to do anything with it either, right? <clears throat> so, or the politicians out there or whatever like that. They got to see that it is just as dangerous as Maitreya is saying to keep it going the way that it's going. So now um, the, the other thing I wanted to kind of say in, in, in reference to what you were asking my, about my opinion is, according to the masters, there are three totalitarianistic structures or institutions or you know, areas of life or whatever you want to call it, uh, economic, political, and religious the two main ones that we're seeing the crises in humanity at this time are um, political and economic, not the religious. I know the religious folks think that that's the biggest thing that they, we should be focusing on, but it's not. According to the masters, it's those other two, because that's really what's holding humanity back. That's what's really jeopardizing the future of humanity, really, is political and economic. If you notice that in that saying, in that teaching that Maitreya says, without sharing, there'd be no justice, without justice, there'd be no peace, without peace, there'd be no future. He never once says, well, without a Christian belief, there will be no justice, without your Christian belief, there will be no future, you know, those kind of things. It's, it's sharing the resources of the world. So <clears throat> as much as I don't mind talking about this information from a mystical standpoint or a religious standpoint, because that's pretty much the questions that I get or the comments that I get, it is more important to look at this information from a economic or political view, really, and of how we can change those systems to, to meet the needs of the people. The systems that we have in place are not going to go fully by the wayside. There are some good things in those systems. And as Maitreya says, the, the, the uh, structures of the future will be built upon the, the remnants of the past. So not all is going to go away. It's just we have to, as a foundation, have the institution, as the principle of sharing in there. And that will meet the needs of the people, will bring about justice, will ease the tensions, bring about goodwill, peace, give people more freedom, and will give us a future, a future of re revealed divinity. Where the religious structures, I think, will eventually crumble in, in terms of their totalitarianistic hold on humanity. I don't think the religious churches and those kind of things are going to go anywhere because they will just they will have a different role in people's lives than they do today. You know, um, they'll be more about teaching and healing humanity than just regurgitating an ideology and keeping in a th you know and collecting money from people in that way and those kind of things. But you know, I think that that uh authoritarian rule will start to crumble on its own <clears throat> after the first two start because for one we will start to we will know for sure that we are not at the top of the evolutionary ladder on this planet that there was a kingdom above us known as the masters of wisdom we'll start to see them in our lives we'll start to experience their wisdom of maitreya the love of maitreya we'll start to see the efforts of humanity working toward their priorities and so forth and how it's bettering life on this planet and it's not so bad and he's not the actual antichrist like so many people feared he's here just as a teacher to inspire and galvanize humanity to build this civilization of you know justice and sharing and peace and those kind of things that will start to release some of the stranglehold that the churches have on the psyche of humanity that's one thing the second thing i think when it's finally confirmed for certain that we are not alone in the universe or even in the solar system. When we see that for sure, which more and more evidence is coming out every day, right? Where we're seeing this, governments are starting to, re to declassify some of the things that they wanted to hold back from the, from the people because they know that it's already gotten out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Might as well start releasing it more and more and more, right? That will, I think, release even more of the stranglehold that that uh, the churches have on the psyche of humanity. And then the last thing I think would be when scientists in France finally discover in a lab the existence of the human soul and what that means. And then other scientists can prove it in their lab. It's the three revelations that I think is coming up here very soon that's going to totally transform life on this planet. And it starts with the economic principle of sharing. I think that's what we're going to see. That's what's going to eventually 
if you want to look at it from a politically correct view, it will start. Will the the church's role will change? But if you want to look at it from what it really is, is the oppression that the churches have on the on the psyche of humanity will start to release and start to crumble in that way. So, but getting back to <clears throat> the question that um, Timothy Tilton asked about uh, how did he, how did he put it? Let me make sure I'm answering it exactly the same. Um, how are we as a humanity going to start our demand of the media to finally let Maitreya address the entire world? I think that, what, how do I answer this? I think it's already started, Timothy. It's just we might not be aware of it and seeing it yet. Okay, so historically what happened, uh, and I'm sure you already know this because you have commented on, on these videos before, and I, I'm sure you're up on this, but somebody else might not know. Is Benjamin Krem, who passed away uh, a few years back, made a comment when he was still alive that uh, an announcement that um, Maitreya had finally, after a long wait, given his first interview on TV. Never claimed to be Maitreya, was never introduced as Maitreya, will not claim to be Maitreya or introduce Maitreya until the day of declaration. Now, without going into all that, just where he is right now is he is speaking to humanity. Now, the reason why he's not claiming to be Maitreya is because he wants you to listen to what he has to say without prejudice. So you can honestly ask yourself and say to yourself, I agree with this or I don't and feel free to be able to do one or the other. But what he's advocating for is a total transformation of, of all the structures and life on planet Earth, really. But doing it very, he's not doing it all at once. He's doing it very, very tiny increments so people are not afraid of what he's saying. They can actually understand what he's saying and listen to it and go, oh, okay. Well, that's a little different than what I'm thinking, but that's what he's talking about, really. Now, he is not on anybody's radar now. In fact, we don't even know where he's speaking because Benjamin Krem was the only one that was publishing where he had been speaking in what country and those kind of things, giving an interview for this, what the reaction was of the people and those kind of things. But to think that he's not doing that anymore because Benjamin Krem passed away a few years back is, I don't, you know, if you agree or believe this information you would see what I'm saying is I don't think that's true, right? Is he still doing this? Now, the, the people's response to what he's saying, and this is where I, I, Timothy, I don't know if you do this or not, but I always suggest this to you and everybody else, and, and I've been doing it myself. I've been taking my own advice, is I've been learning more about this information, especially from reading Benjamin Krem's master's articles. Can't stress that enough. When you read it for yourself, you internalize what he's saying way better. And he's talked about things that are coming to pass now that I didn't even know about 10, 15 years ago. I didn't realize this until I started reading his articles for this channel. One of the things that he said was there would be eventually when Maitreya was about to come out and be known for who he is as, a, as, you know, as the world teacher, there would be this interest in politics that would come from a lot of people, people that were not interested in politics anymore. Or before, right? And now they are, right? And what are you seeing? You're seeing people who are just, everything is political now. Everything, you know? And so you can't escape it anymore. People, you know, but they're asserting their view politically. They're very divided in their view, right? They're, they're trusting one source, but not the other. They're trusting one politician, but not the other, where they should be not trusting any politician or any media source for that matter, right? Right at this moment in time, as far as I'm concerned, not to sound cynical, but, you know, I think they, they all deserve our, our skepticism to some degree and not just taking at face value just because so-and-so said it, I believe that and not this other person, right? But that's where we're at. And... <clears throat> You know, we're seeing this interest because politics really is about the voice of the people, really, in the end. It's not about Republican. It's not about Democrat. It's not about right. It's not about left. It's about the voice of the people. But we're seeing it in a divided way. That's what we're seeing. So if you're caught up in the divisions, that's all you're seeing. But if you step back and you look at this and you read this information and you take in what Benjamin Crumb's master is saying, you can look at it from a different perspective and go, oh, that's what we're seeing now. If you look at it from marches and people standing up in the voice of the people this way, look at what happened in Russia last year. Look at what happened in Iran last year. With Look at what happened in the United States <clears throat> in the summer of 2020 with the Black Lives Matter movement, right? People are marching for what they see as an injustice. You know, 
to their credit, I don't condone what they did, but the people who marched who marched and eventually rioted at the Capitol on January 6th were doing the same thing in their own way, really. They were marching and, and fighting for an in, against an injustice that they saw. They trust, I think, where they're being misled and misguided. They were, trusted, they were trusting people who shouldn't be trusted. But they in themselves were fighting for something that they saw was an injustice, hands down. You can't deny that, even if you don't agree with what they had to say, right? So... These are all things that I think that are a direct result of Maitreya starting to awaken up the hearts of, and, of people because within the hearts of every one of us, according to Maitreya, is, the, what, is this truth about oneness, is this truth about unity, the need for peace, the need for justice, the need for sharing even, is in the hearts of humanity. You can see it waking up. It's just maybe not exactly what you want in the time frame that you want. The media, I think, will not, they won't be actually um, forced to, I hate to use that word forced, but they won't be strongly encouraged by the voice of the, by the will of the people, let's put it like that, to allow Maitreya to speak to everyone on the day of declaration until Maitreya is already well known for what he's saying and who, maybe not who he is, but for the possibility that what he's saying for humanity and those kind of things. When that happens, that's when people are like, hey, we need to let him speak. But it could happen very quickly. You know, look at what happened. I mean, historically, just go back and watch some of the videos or read some things about the fall of the Berlin Wall or in the ending of, a, of apartheid. You know, those, those institutions and those regimes that seem to have the stranglehold on the people forever, you know, for long, I mean, long into the future, collapsed at a, very quickly. It was almost night and day. That's how fast it can really happen, you know? Some revolutions take longer. Other ones are quick, you know? But if you're, looking, if you're looking at the right thing, if you're looking at it in the right way, you can see these changes already going on, Timothy. I'm not trying to put you off, and I'm not trying to gaslight you. Just look at it and see for yourself, you know? And then maybe you won't be, you know, if, you're, if you are impatient about it, don't. Don't be. This is all a part of the process. We're all learning what we need to learn. We're all going through it together, you know? It, but when humanity, just like I said about the World Economic Forum, when each and every one of us see that our future depends on whether we institute the principle of sharing, until that happens, we're not going to do it. You know, none of us are going to go at it, right? Because why? You know, we got the life that we have. We have the house that we have. We have the cars that we have. Some of us have more than others, nicer cars than others, blah, 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 blah. But we all got what we need, right? So what's the point? The problem is we don't all have what we need. There's a whole side of this planet that doesn't. Well, they're not going to sit with that forever. So those people who think that, that it's gonna, this can stay the way that it is forever are ignorant of the laws of life. And they're naive, really. But it's the fear, it's the complacency that's causing them to, to think this way, to act this way, to vote this way if they're a politician. It, and it, it's going to change because we're seeing the effects of this system on its people now. You know. But anyway, but thank you for the question. And hopefully I answered it in as, as best I possibly could. Now, in keeping with what I had promised peaceful energy, nothing but good vibes. <laughs> I want to read an article Coming from Benjamin Krems Master, and as always, it's better for you to read this yourself. You can for free by going to the Sharon National site. If you're willing to buy one of his books, go to the Amazon link that I have in the description portion. You can buy this book for yourself, A Master Speaks. Volume one or two, doesn't matter. Volume one has more articles in it, but they're older. But even though they have been perhaps written and published decades ago, they still pertain to today if you really start paying attention to it and start looking at it, you know. But it definitely can open up your eyes to how these masters think, how they'll be teaching humanity, about the priorities of Maitreya, about some of the things that we'll have to go through in the process of Maitreya coming out and inspiring humanity in that way to the, what it really means and who Maitreya is and what he really means for humanity and why he's here. So couldn't stress that enough. Check out some of these articles. Read them. You know, it doesn't cost you anything. Just read it. You know what I mean? If you don't like them, don't read them again. You know? But this one is entitled, All Things New. For many centuries, men have awaited the events which are now coming to pass. Consciously or not, they have sensed the possibility of planetary renewal and looked forward to the presence of a teacher or savior to point their feet 
in that direction. Notwithstanding their beliefs and actions, to the contrary, men have always known that evolution proceeds according to plan, that naught can halt that process, and that only ignorance and neglect have alienated them from their experiences of many lives ago. Today, Around the world, a new and vibrant expectation heralds the arrival of the teacher, albeit in a manner and guise unusual and unexpected. For many, it denotes the fulfillment of their cherished doctrines and prophecies. For others, it is the answer to their prayers for succor and guidance. To humanity as a whole, it offers the possibility of a complete change in perception of life's purpose and meaning and the opportunity to contribute their individual gifts of talents and energy to the transformation of this world. That is no small task and will require the concerted dedication, skill, and above all, goodwill of all men to accomplish. They will not act alone nor without guidance. In every endeavor, men can expect to receive the help and encouragement of their elder brothers those who have gone before and whom men call masters. We stand ready to inspire and to assist in every action which benefits and unites the race of men. Fear not, therefore, the, the awesomeness of the task, for help will be yours on every hand. There are many actions which, as yet, men are unable to perform, lacking not only the means but the awareness of the need. These, where possible, within law, men, we shall accomplish for you. Thus shall we lead you step by step along the path of achievement, saving you much hardship and many false starts. Today, Maitreya, our master, performs many, uh, many tasks which only he may do as the agent of divine intervention. Thus does he speed the day when all may see him. That day comes ever closer and will be the signal that the new age has begun, that the new livingness which he embodies is being spread abroad, that humanity has within itself the means to right the ills of the world, and needs only courage and the trust in its own divinity to make all things new. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening. And we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.